Let's say we want to find the acute angle between the lines L1, which is R equals 237 plus lambda lots of minus 1, minus 5, 3. And line 2 is R equals minus 3, minus 10, 2 plus mu times 8, 2, 1. Okay, so what you need to get your head around is that I made up these two lines on the spot. Okay, so the likelihood of them intersecting is very slim indeed. Okay, so they might intersect. I don't know. I've just made the numbers up. But in 3D space, it's more than likely that they don't intersect. OK, so regardless of which way you look at it, uh, one will be behind the other. OK, if you move, shift your focus around in 3D space, so it'll look something like this. OK, now we're being asked to find the acute angle. So what you need to get your head around is that even though the two lines don't intersect, you can still work out the angle that is made between them. OK, and so it is found by looking at this angle here, which will be the acute angle of the two. You'll notice that there are going to be two possible answers because, well, two possible answers to just finding the angle because there's this one and there's this one, depending on which way you look at it. Of course, this is the acute angle that I want to find, but I could end up through this process finding the obtuse angle. In which case, I need to know to take that away from 180 to work out the angle that I want. Now, it may seem strange that you're going to be finding the angle between two lines that don't intersect. OK? Now, what you need to think about is imagine that you are going to pick up these two lines, OK? And you're going to maintain the same angle and you're going to reposition them so they are both going through the origin, effectively. OK, so imagine that they do both intersect and they now go through the origin. Now, the consequence of doing this is that these position vectors that we have for these two lines make, well, do nothing for us. You know, we can completely ignore the position vectors for these two lines. All you are interested in is their directions. Okay, so effectively moving it to the origin, you know, if you want to think of it that way, is just ignore the position vectors. You don't want to take any consideration of those. All you want to do is focus in on the direction vectors. And you're just finding the angle between these two. Okay, so all we need to do is use the scalar product to find the angle between those two vectors. That's all this problem reduces down to. So the first thing that I'm going to do is dot them together. 8, 2, 1. And we get minus 1 times 8 plus minus 5 times 2 plus 3 times 1. So minus 8, take away 10, plus 3. So minus 18 plus 3 is minus 15. So cosine of the angle will be equal to minus 15 divided by the length of this vector. So the square root of right, 1 squared plus 25. So 1 plus 25 plus 9. So that will be 25 plus 9 is 34, so 35. So root 35. And then we've got 8 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared, so 64. Uh, plus 4 is 68, plus 1 is 69, so root 69. OK. So then I can just plug that into my calculator. So uh, minus 15 divided by the square root of 35 times by the square root of 69, and then inverse cosine that, and we get theta is 107.77223333, okay, etc. Now, of course, the angle that I've got here is obtuse. You need to double check that. So actually, on my diagram, what I've found is this angle here. 
Okay? The angle that I want is the acute angle. That one. So the acute angle will be equal to 180, take away the previous answer, which is 72.2 degrees to 3 sig fig. This is the acute angle between the two lines. So what you need to do, what you need to think about when you're solving this type of problem is ignore the position vectors of the lines, just use the direction vectors, find the angle between those, that's the angle between the two lines.